Everything new under the sun. Good evening, folks. This is War News 247. Kissinger's intervention. Rejoin the international system for Russia. If it is destroyed, Armageddon will follow, is the headline. And this is an interesting article about, and this is this is a guy that has a lot of power, a guy in the know, in the uh, circles of power. A dramatic appeal to give Russia a chance to rejoin the international system after any peace deal in Ukraine was addressed to the international community from where? Davos, Switzerland, on Tuesday, January 17th, yesterday, by former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. I don't know how these people keep power and uh, keep in high positions, uh, but they got a lot of money, a lot more than I do, and uh, they, they seem to like those power circles. They never never retire from them. He says that all dialogue with Moscow must continue. Now, the idea is um, that they need to, they can't have a situation where Russia's destroyed. And they say that because the geopolitical situation, the uh, d division of land in Russia, if it were to fall apart, and the threat of nuclear weapons and all the other conventional weapons and the bases that might fall into uh, the hands of um, uh, militant forces and, and, and uh, rogue forces and, uh, you know, um, terrorists, etc. Um, they can't have Russia and the land of Russia fall into that situation. So what Kissinger is sending, um, uh, or saying, all the while... Uh, Germany is saying U.S. must lead the way on tanks for Ukraine, and uh, Poland is adding tanks into the mix, and I think France is sending tanks, and everybody's sending tanks, so no one's asking for peace. But what we have is Kissinger here saying, at the end of the day, even though we have no interest in peace, he's not saying that, I'm adding that part, um, we need to keep Russia from being completely destroyed. So what they want to uh, basically bankrupt Russia, uh, but not so much that they are removed from the world scene. They, they need Russia to stay as a, uh, um, a con country, a single country that is under control by, um, you know, the, the central government uh, so that these nuclear weapons don't fall into hands who they might not be able to negotiate with. He says, this is why I believe uh, in dialogue with Russia while the war continues. So in dialogue with Russia while the war continues, he's not saying... You know, let's have a ceasefire. Let's have peace. But let's dialogue with them while the war continues. Continues In the end of hostilities, when the pre-war line is reached, to me that sounds like Kissinger is saying, when Russia moves back to its own borders, um, and in a continuing process of neg negotiations with Europe and America, while sanctions will be maintained until a final settlement is reached. So it sounds like he's saying, the West, U.S. is not going to give up anything Russia is going to have to go back to their borders and give up everything. Uh, and he is not saying we want peace, but he is saying they want uh, Russia to stay together. So uh, interesting bunch of uh, comments by Kissinger. Uh, what, what the West really wants, and they're, they're basically uh, um, uh, putting it there out for uh, Putin to understand and hear. Uh, and basically there's no way out for Putin. Putin has... No way to save face in this situation. He wins the war and Russia and NATO is destroyed, or he loses the war and he is uh, the laughingstock of his country. Uh, his country may stay together, he may be in power, but he would be uh, completely destroyed on the world stage and wouldn't really have any other say or, or power uh, otherwise after that. So there's no way out for Russia, and that's basically Kissinger is saying that, and it's really kind of an insult. I, I don't know if Kissinger meant it that way. Uh, but really, it's a, it's, it's a bully, uh, the bully of the West, uh, saying this to, to Russia. Basically, we're going to keep uh, sending you weapon, uh, sending weapons against you and tanks, and you have to negotiate with us. Interesting. Now, look at this one. This is War News 247 as well. Russia produces three times more air defense missiles than the USA. What does this tell me? This tells me that Russia is getting ready for long-term war. Russia is getting ready for... Um, uh, air defense and, and uh, 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 offensive sorties against Russia with uh, uh, long-range missiles. This tells me they're getting ready for the long war. What is the U.S. doing? Well, 
I don't know if they're uh, producing a lot of uh, air defense missiles. They're cer certainly using a lot of them. Um, but are, are the uh, manufacturers and, and um, the companies set up to uh, replace all these um, all the uh, uh, weapons that uh, uh, the U.S. and the West is using in Ukraine? I don't think so, but uh, Russia's getting ready. So again, back to this one. I think it's interesting that uh, uh, Germany says the U.S. needs to lead it. Basically, I think, uh, I think the, what they're saying is, you know what, the U.S. started this war, the U.S. has to finish the war. Um, Germany is now clearly signaling that Washington must lead the way in opening the floodgates of heavy weapons. Why? No one wants to take the fall directly. No one wants to be accused by Russia. Um, that they started the war because if Germany starts the war, then Russia will come against Germany. If France started the war, then Russia will come against France and and uh, and Poland likewise. They want um, the U.S. to start it, start the fight, so that any initial consequences will be to the United States. It's smart, um, but uh, it's also a way to suggest that you know what the the U.S. got got uh, Ukraine into it is uh, is is financing it, is pr producing all the hardware and, and money for this and they really need to finish it at the end of the day if that's what they're going to do and it seems that's what they want now this all leads into where are we in terms of the in terms of the nuclear threat and um uh the ultimate um uh, armageddon situation that uh, kissinger uh seems to be uh talking about here armageddon will follow if russia is destroyed well we have this Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists and the Doomsday Clock. Now, this is coming up on the 24th. Here is the Mark Your Calendar page of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. Mark your calendar. January 24, 2023, 10 a.m. Eastern. The Science and Security Board of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists will make the 2023 Doomsday Clock announcements. And the suggestion is that it will move closer uh, in 2022, it was 100 seconds to midnight. Um, some say it's going to be 60 seconds to midnight. So we'll see what they choose to do, how much closer they get. But certainly, you look at the war in Russia, the escalation, uh, and the fact that there's no interest by the West, it appears, uh, for peace. Uh, do you hear Biden out there calling for peace, uh, calling for uh, maybe talks? Uh, no one's calling for that. Uh, the best Kissinger can do is say that, you know what, while we're while we're fighting against you, you need to stay uh, talking to us. Uh, but no indication that you know they're they're ever going to relent or 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 that or that there's any interest by the West to stop the war. There's not. They're practicing all their uh, uh, tactics and strategies for war. They're testing out all their weaponry and ammunition. Um, uh, this is all good testing grounds basically for the United States war machine and therefore the NATO war machine. And as they escalate, now they're moving to tanks. They'll start it with the, the dumbest tanks uh, first and then they'll go to the more technological tanks. And they're basically seeing how Russia deals with each uh, level of technology, what they have to defend against it, uh, what their tactics are, how the, how the tactics change depending on the certain the weapons and, and the defensive weapons that Ukraine is using. And it's all an information gathering ga a game for both sides. But uh, and but it's not a game for Russia. Russia is really in it to, to push NATO off its borders. And uh, they would say to protect their sovereignty ultimately against an, an, um, uh, a NATO that is uh, getting close to its borders. But I think from a U.S. standpoint, the U.S. is just having a lot of fun. All the warmongers are just having a lot of fun spending uh, someone else's money to uh, practice and, and test all the, the weapons that they've created over the last number of years through the Cold War and onwards um, to see how they do against another uh, world power in terms of military strength, uh, that being uh, Russia. So it's it's a sad story. It's the state of the world. Um you and me, us, we, we peons, we can't do anything about this other than vote in new leaders, and hopefully they will. Um, uh, hopefully the U.S. will, hopefully Canada will. Uh, Canada is sending tanks, there are not tanks, but uh, armored troop carriers, uh, and, and that does not bode well for Canada. That means uh, not only is U.S. in the crosshairs of uh, uh, cyber attacks, but Canada now is directly in the crosshairs, sending hardware equipment to Ukraine, uh, and now we are uh, a valid um, uh, opponent 
in the fight with Ukraine. We are now um, uh, a legal target, if you will, by Russia because we're helping Ukraine battle Russia. So, folks, be prepared. Um, more cyber attacks are coming. More trouble is coming. More hard times are coming. You need to be prepared. One thing we're working towards is um, uh, a one month's worth of uh, mortgage uh, payment in cash. Now, many preppers on YouTube would say, you need six months uh, of uh, or a year worth of mortgage payments and, and a lot more cash than that. Uh, but you know what? Uh, for some of us, it's hard. Uh, we don't have uh, the money like maybe these big YouTubers do. Uh, and I know certainly a lot of you, even to get one month's mortgage uh, in, in cash set apart uh, should uh, the banking system go down uh, is very hard. It's very hard for us. Um, we have kids, we have lots of bills, expenses. Uh, we have to keep doing life as normal and then consider all these other uh, possibilities that are coming upon us. So it's just uh, one more thing, folks. And uh, so do what you can, be prepared. But ultimately, uh, we know that we know what our future holds in terms of our eternity. Uh, we are safe in Christ Jesus. We have faith that uh, uh, should we leave this world, we will be in eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven. And uh, that, that's our hope. That's the hope of salvation. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I hope you find him today. I hope you know him um, and accept his free gift of salvation today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.